Hi, I'm Tracy Fessenden. I'm the co-director of the Recovering Truth Project at the Center for the Study of Religion and Conflict at ASU. And I am so happy to be here today with my colleague, Julio Cisneros. Julio is the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Professor of Practice at the Cronkite School, uh, where he focuses on health reporting, uh, primarily in underserved communities, uh, and um, has a special emphasis on health solutions, which is very um, uh, uh, uplifting <laughs> to, uh, to know about these days, especially. Uh, Julio has a fascinating story. When we asked the Recovering Truth Fellows to propose readings that they'd like to do together with us, uh, Julio sent us something from uh, Descartes, something from Spinoza, and also recommended A Hundred Years of Solitude uh, by uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Uh, uh, yeah. We had a lovely conversation about truth and magical realism. That's right, uh, yeah. Julio himself is a, is a novelist. Uh, he's written one novel, a memoir, and is at work on another novel in addition to uh, his reporting. Uh, he's a six-time Emmy award-winning journalist and has been uh, at Telemundo until we were able to bring him to Cronkite at the time. Uh, so Julio, it's wonderful to have you with us. I'm delighted to welcome you. And I just wanted to invite you to say a little bit about your background and what brings you to the Recovering Truth Project. Okay, uh, thank you, Tracy. For me, really, it's a pleasure to be here. And um, this topic is very important for me. That's why I wanted to participate with the fellowship because um, the, the fact that truth and um, is a topic that always intrigued me. And um, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm from Guatemala, Central America, and uh, um, the story is a little bit scary because I was 11 years old. And uh, I remember that in the 80s, some, I used to live uh, close to the police station. So the police officers invited me to go to see, apparently they found some bodies. So in my mind as a child and curious child, I thought, oh, maybe they're gonna be bodies covered with some plastic. So I asked my dad if I can go. And he said, yeah, sure, go. I don't know why he <laughs> said that, but he let me go. So I went and uh, when I was close to the ravine, uh, I saw something that really shocked me and changed my life forever from that particular moment. I saw a pile of naked bodies at the bottom of the ravine. They were naked, mutilated, dozens of bodies, blood. It was a horrible scene and uh, I was in shock. Uh, to be honest with you, even present time, I still have uh, nightmares about that moment. And since that moment, I start asking about what's going on in my country. Some people told me that those people were um, victims of the guerrillas, the rebels that they wanna take over the country and they were against the government. And then I asked other people, they say a completely different story. They told me that no, they, those people were killed by the army. And, um, and so I didn't know who was telling the truth. And uh, on news, I, I remember watching a, a television, black and white, <laughs> still, and I saw a guy, it was a dictator. It was really scary, dressed in a military and uh, speaking to the whole country and basically threatening everybody saying like, it's, uh, after 6 p.m., you're not allowed to be home. You're not allowed to be in groups. And if you are in groups, and you will be arrested. Don't go anywhere. And yeah, people were, uh, were afraid. And I remember people got shot just, just to be in a, in a park, doing nothing. So I lived those years in fear, and I didn't know what to believe. From that moment, I decided, well, I want to be a journalist. So I started a quest trying to find the truth. And, um, and here I am. So I went to college and then I came here to the United States. And here, after years, the war is over. But I know, according to facts documented by the United Nations, that during that time, about 200,000 people died of that war and most of the people were killed by the army, the Guatemala army. So it's, um, 
And that's why I decided to be a journalist, just to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. We were saying earlier that uh, one of the, something that you helped me to remember is that so much of what we're seeing now isn't new. It feels very shocking. It feels very new to me, but uh, others like you have seen much of this before in other places. That's and, correct. And your, your story brings home very powerfully about being a child and wanting to know who these people were, the, the people mm -hmm. whose, whose bodies you witnessed, who are these people, and you got two very, very different stories that reflect two very different political stances that were mm -hmm. diametrically opposed. So that kind of polarization around life or death issues is something that we're also seeing now. So you, you come to this moment with a very, very long uh, history of thinking hard about questions that for many of us feel newly pressing. But for you, they've been questions that you've been living with for, for decades. That's right, yeah. Basically, this is not, nothing new for me because I grew up in, in my country and where you don't believe in anything. So at that time, that particular time, media were controlled by a dictator. So you, you couldn't trust the media in that time in my country. I'm not saying that this is the case here. But as you know, um, we as humans, homo sapiens, we are um, the only species that we lie in the entire animal kingdom. So lying is nothing new. So I saw that. So I didn't know what to believe. So what we're seeing right now is is basically not the same, but it's something that I already lived before. And let me tell you the difference now is because um, technology, internet changed everything. So the news fly immediately. Social media also, you read news there, people may comment, some people believe that what they read in social media is the truth. So we have so many, so many sources, so ma many information coming to your brain. We have movies, we have a TV commercials. So we are influenced by many, many sources. So at this point, yeah, um, from my perspective, we just have to not to believe, we just have to look the truth for ourselves. 